Sure, superheroes have their differences. That's why they're always fighting, right? Yeah, but Connor Knighton says there's even more conflict when it comes to their licensing. That's why you won't see Iron Man and the X-Men on the same big screen anytime soon. Connor, what's the deal? X-Men Days of Future Past features an appearance by the mutant Quicksilver. He is fast, really fast. Blink and you will miss him fast. Moviegoers may be doing a double take when they see Quicksilver again, played by a different actor in next year's Avengers Age of Ultron. He won't be called a mutant in that movie. He's a miracle. The two different Quicksilvers offer a glimpse into the complicated world of Marvel licensing. Back in the 90s, Marvel started selling off the movie rights to its characters. Sony, for example, owns Spider-Man. Sony can make all of the Spider-Man films it wants to, but Spider-Man can't fight Magneto because the X-Men belong to Fox. 20th Century Fox has the rights to everything X-Men. That means Wolverine spinoffs, all that stuff. They own the rights to other Marvel characters like the Fantastic Four and Deadpool. Marvel now has its own studio, owned by Disney, which pretty much owns everything else. Marvel's gotten back rights to characters like Elektra and Daredevil, and more importantly, it controls the hugely successful Avengers. All of the spin-off movies and sequels and shows like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Quicksilver is a rare case. He is technically an Avenger and an X-Men, so he can be used by Fox and Marvel. Now that Marvel's in the movie business, I'm sure they'd love to have the rest of the X-Men back. Instead, they're trying to hype some of the more obscure characters they do own. This summer's Guardians of the Galaxy features lesser-known characters like Gamora, Rocket Raccoon, Groot. Even Marvel knows we've never heard of these guys. Who are you? Star-Lord. Who? Star-Lord, man. Legendary outlaw? Forget it. At least Star-Lord sounds better than Man-Thing. Lionsgate ended up with the rights to Man-Thing and tried to release a Man-Thing movie back in 2005. It never went to theaters here in the U.S. Instead, it ended up on the Sci-Fi Channel, home of Sharknado. Not every Marvel movie has superpowers.